When A Different World spun off from The Cosby Show, it did more than follow Denise Huxtable to college. It created a cultural phenomenon all its own. This groundbreaking series not only launched the careers of stars like Jada Pinkett Smith, but also addressed important social issues with humor and heart. While it's been years since the show aired, the legacy of its beloved cast members endures. Sadly, some of these stars are no longer with us. Here's a heartfelt look back at the actors from A Different World who have passed away. Earl Hyman as Russell Huxtable. Earl Hyman, a classically trained actor, had a versatile career spanning stage, screen, and voice work. He caught the acting bug at 13 and made his Broadway debut as a teenager. Over the years, he became a respected Shakespearean actor, performing in London and beyond. While he is fondly remembered for his roles in cartoons like Thundercats and as Russell Huxtable on The Cosby Show, for which he received an Emmy nomination, his career extended far beyond these roles. Earl Hyman's legacy is that of a talented entertainer who left his mark on the industry and inspired many. Sadly, Hyman died at age 91 on November 17, 2017, at the Lillian Booth Actors Home in Inglewood, New Jersey. James Avery as the Pin Punisher. With his deep voice and commanding presence, James Avery became a familiar face on TV, often playing authoritative figures like cops, judges, or priests. His versatility as an actor allowed him to take on a wide range of roles, from serious dramas like L.A. Law to fantasy shows such as Beauty and the Beast. Even after The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air ended, Avery continued to showcase his talent on TV. He played a dad in the show Sparks and lent his voice to cartoons like Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. James Avery's dedication to his craft left a lasting legacy of memorable characters that continue to entertain and inspire audiences. Sadly, he passed away in 2013, but his impact on the world of entertainment remains undeniable. Thomas McCall Ford as Lamar Collins Tommy Ford's journey to becoming a beloved actor began in an unlikely place. His heart initially belonged to the pulpit, with dreams of becoming a preacher. However, fate had other plans, and in high school he discovered a passion for acting that would change his life forever. Determined to hone his craft, he pursued his education at USC, setting the stage for a successful career. Even after Martin ended in the late 90s, Tommy continued to pursue acting roles and discovered a new passion for inspiring young people through motivational speaking. Sadly, Tommy Ford passed away in 2016 at the age of 52, leaving behind a legacy of entertainment and inspiration. Jaime Cardrice as Winston the Meat Locker Woodson Growing up in Cerritos, California, he excelled in football and basketball at Oklahoma State University, becoming an All-American football player, but it was his foray into professional wrestling as the Harlem Warlord that first brought him into the spotlight. Cardrici's journey into acting was a serendipitous one. A casting director discovered him while he was working out at a local gym. From there, he went on to appear in shows like Malcolm and Eddie and movies such as Freaked and Deep Cover. Despite his success in the entertainment industry, Cardrich never forgot his roots, and he is survived by his loving family, including his parents, grandparents, and four children. Jaime Cardrich's life was tragically cut short when he passed away on July 28, 2000, in Torrance, California. Larry Linville as Senan Hutchinson Larry Linville started out in the late 60s with small roles on shows you might recognize, like Marcus Welby, M.D. His big break came in 1972 when he landed a part on M.A.S.H. The show became a huge hit, and Larry became a familiar face. Being on such a popular show kept him busy, so he didn't have much time to act in other things during that time. After he left M.A.S.H. in 1977, Larry showed his range by appearing in comedies like The Love Boat. Even though he wasn't the star of another long-running series, Larry left a lasting impression. He faced some health challenges in the late 90s and passed away in 2000. 
but fans of Maya Sage will always remember him for his unforgettable performance as Major Frank Burns. Diahan Carroll The charismatic Diahan Carroll, a Golden Globe winner, Emmy nominee, Academy Award nominee, and Tony Award winner, was the perfect choice to play Whitley Gilbert's mother, Marion Gilbert, on A Different World. With her impressive resume, including a memorable role in the Star Wars Holiday Special, Carol brought a wealth of experience and talent to the show. During her time on the series, she even received a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. Although Carol only appeared in nine episodes of A Different World, she made each one memorable. After her time on the show, she continued her successful acting career, appearing in popular series such as Grey's Anatomy and White Collar. Diahan Carroll passed away from cancer on October 4, 2019, at the age of 84, leaving behind a remarkable legacy in the entertainment industry. Heavy D as himself Among the most beloved and influential figures in the history of hip-hop, Heavy D was born Dwight Arrington Myers in Jamaica in 1967. Relocating with his family to Mount Vernon, New York as a small child, Heavy D grew up listening to R&B and took an interest in the burgeoning rap scene as a teenager. Forming the group Heavy D and the Boys with DJ Eddie F and dancers T-Roy and G-Wiz, Heavy D began exploring a new sound, fusing rap with the song structures of R&B. Sparking the interest of Rush Management's Andre Harrell, the Heavy D's act became the first group signed to Harrell's new label, Uptown Records, which Heavy D would serve as president of for several years. He would also showcase a talent for acting, with appearances in films like The Cider House Rules and The Tower Heist. Tragically, Heavy D died in 2011. He was 44 years old. Ron O'Neill as Mercer Gilbert. When it came to casting Whitley Gilbert's father, Mercer Gilbert, on A Different World, the show needed a powerful presence, and they found it in Ron O'Neill. Known for his iconic role in the 1972 black exploitation film Superfly, O'Neill's portrayal of the flamboyant young blood priest brought him fame. However, as he later admitted, the role also limited his career opportunities, with people assuming he was a hustler in real life. Despite the challenges, O'Neill persevered in his acting career. Beyond Super Fly, O'Neill is remembered for his memorable roles in the 1984 film Red Dawn as Colonel Ernesto Bella and as Ladernt Isidore Smalls on The Equalizer. But his talent extended beyond the screen, as he was also a prolific and award-winning stage actor, performing on and off Broadway to critical acclaim. Sadly, Ron O'Neill passed away on January 14, 2004, at the age of 66, in Los Angeles due to pancreatic cancer. Christophe St. John as E.Z. Brooks. Christophe St. John, while known for brief appearances on popular shows like The Cosby Show and A Different World, found his true calling in the world of daytime dramas. He began his soap opera journey in 1989 with a multi-year stint on Generations, playing the role of Adam Marshall. However, it was his next role that truly propelled him to stardom. In 1991, St. John landed the role of Neil Winters on CBS's The Young and the Restless, and this character became his signature. For an impressive 28 years, St. John dedicated himself to this role, delivering over 1,800 captivating performances and solidifying Neil Winters as a central figure in the soap's sprawling storylines. Sadly, Christophe St. John passed away unexpectedly in 2019 at the young age of 52 due to heart failure. Julius Carey as Larry Beaujolais, Chicago native, Julius Carey's first on-screen credit was a small role in the 1979 black exploitation film Disco Godfather. A versatile character actor, Carey played a basketball player on the television series The White Shadow, a cab customer on Hill Street Blues, and a CIA agent in the comedy The Man with One Red Shoe. Although a critical disappointment at the time of its release, The Last Dragon is now a cult classic with Carey's portrayal of the urban samurai Shonuf proving to be his most celebrated.
Carey continued to act in television throughout the 1990s and early 2000s, with recurring roles on the sitcoms Murphy Brown, Two Guys, A Girl in a Pizza Place, and Boy Meets World, before succumbing to pancreatic cancer at the age of 56 in 2008. Gilbert Gottfried as Sergeant. Gilbert Gottfried was one of a kind. This fast-talking comedian with the squinty eyes and high-pitched voice was a legend. He got his start in New York comedy clubs as a teenager and quickly became known for his edgy, uncensored style. You might remember him from roasts where he'd take hilarious and sometimes controversial jabs at celebrities. But Gilbert wasn't just about shocking people. He also landed roles in movies and TV shows, like the parrot Iago in Disney's Aladdin. He even did voiceover work for commercials, including that A-flack duck. Sadly, Gilbert Gottfried passed away in 2022. Even though he wasn't always appropriate, there's no doubt he was a memorable and talented comedian. Raymond St. Jacques as Professor Charles Mosley. The tall and talented actor Roscoe Lee Brown, known for his resonant baritone voice, emerged as one of America's premier black performers in the mid-1960s. With a versatile range, he effectively portrayed both heroic characters and villains on screen. Brown made history as the first continuing black character on a TV western, playing a cattle driver in the series Rawhide. He further showcased his talents by directing and producing the 1973 feature Book of Numbers, a comic drama set in the 1930s. Sadly, Roscoe Lee Brown passed away on August 27, 1990, at Cedars Sinai Medical Center in Los Angeles, California, due to lymphoma. His impressive body of work and groundbreaking roles continue to inspire and entertain audiences. Lou Myers as Vernon Gaines. Even though Mr. Gaines seemed grumpy on the outside, there was more to him than met the eye. Lou was a talented actor who made that role believable. But A Different World wasn't all Lou did. He appeared in movies like Volcano and The Wedding Planner after the show ended. Lou was also a successful stage actor and even a musician. He was a well-rounded entertainer who was involved in his community. Sadly, Lou Myers passed away in 2013 at the age of 77. He left behind a legacy of great acting and a reminder that there's often more to people than what you see at first glance. Layla Danette as Ms. Pruitt. Danette may have been born in Jacksonville, Florida, but she would soon find herself in Baltimore and Washington, D.C., where she began her career as an educator. After teaching speech to students in both cities, she pursued her passion for acting and never looked back. At the age of 67, Danette took to the stage as a professional actress. She shared the spotlight with the legendary James Earl Jones in The Great White Hope, and her performance in The Brothers in 1982 garnered notable acclaim. But it was her role in Uncle Jack that truly showcased her talent, with critics praising her touching authenticity as a Broadway veteran. Sadly, she passed away on September 4, 2012 in New York. Galen Gerg as Melissa Swayze. With parents deeply involved in theater, it's no surprise that Galen found her way to the stage at a young age. She excelled in youth and local theater productions, and her talent was evident from an early age. However, it was her passion for dance that truly set her apart. Gallen's dedication and hard work earned her scholarships to prestigious dance academies, including the Dupree Dance Academy and the Alvin Ailey Summer Program, where she refined her skills in various dance styles. The exceptional training Galen received opened doors to work with some of the industry's most renowned choreographers, such as Michael Peters, Debbie Allen, and Marguerite Derricks. Her talent and hard work paid off, leading to a successful career in music videos and commercials. This, in turn, paved the way for her to become a sought-after dancer and showgirl on Italian television, captivating audiences with her grace and talent. Sadly. Gerg died of cancer on July 14, 2020, a day before her 56th birthday. Zakes Moke as Marcus Mpepo. One of South Africa's most celebrated black actors, 
Zake's moke has captivated audiences and critics alike with his subtle strength, undeniable charm, and a sense of humor that never wavers. Together with his white countryman, Athol Fugard, he founded the groundbreaking theater group, The Rehearsal Room, in the 1950s. Their collaboration brought to life powerful plays like The Blood Knot and Bozeman and Lena. Moke's talent knew no borders, and he moved to the USA in 1969, where he delivered memorable performances in films such as Cry Freedom and A Dry White Season. His performance in Fugard's Master Harold and the Boys on Broadway earned him a Tony Award, sharing the stage with Danny Glover and Lonnie Price. Sadly, Moke died from complications of a stroke on 11 September 2009 in Las Vegas. Al Fan as diner employee. Al Fan had a versatile career in film, television, and voice acting. He made his acting debut in Cotton Comes to Harlem and went on to appear in classics like The French Connection. With his distinctive voice, he found a niche in voiceover work for cartoons like Challenge of the Super Friends. Fan continued to build his resume with starring roles in He's the Mayor and Bodies of Evidence, alongside appearances in films like The Fisher King. His consistent work in the Aero Zeros included guest spots on The West Wing and Curb Your Enthusiasm. Fan's legacy is that of a talented actor who left his mark across various genres and mediums. Sadly, he died on 14th October 2018, Rosalind Cash as Dean Hughes. This intense, stage-trained African-American leading lady of the 1970s and busy supporting player ever since, began her career in NYC, performing as a nightclub singer before moving to stage work on and off Broadway. In 1968, Cash joined the prestigious Negro Ensemble Company. Cash's TV credits tended toward the high-minded and culturally sensitive with projects like the 1974 PBS Theater in America, presentation of a New York Shakespeare Festival production of King Lear, and the 1984 adaptation of James Baldwin's autobiographical classic, Go Tell It on the Mountain. In 1994, Cash accepted what was to become her TV last role, Mary May Ward, a proud matriarch who had triumphed over racism and tragedy on the ABC daytime drama General Hospital. Sadly, she died of cancer on October 31, 1995, at Cedars Sinai Medical Center in Los Angeles, California, aged 56. Famous for his extremely high energy level and for a series of outlandish characterizations, especially those featuring the star in drag, Burl was at the top of the TV ratings for several seasons. After his show ended, he stayed prominent in the public eye via many TV specials, both those built around him and in guest star spots, where his trademark cigar, snide wisecracks, unctuous manner, and withering glare at the camera were put to good use. Sadly, Burl died in Los Angeles from colon cancer on March 27, 2002. Brian James as Billy Joe Ackerman, towering over most at 6'3", Brian James wasn't your typical leading man. With a mischievous grin and a steely gaze, he carved a niche for himself playing unforgettable bad guys. Starting in the mid-70s, James became a go-to for genre directors, especially action maestro Walter Hill. He brought a unique blend of menace and humor to films like Hard Times and Southern Comfort. However, sci-fi fans know him best as Leon Kowalski, the brutal replicant in Ridley Scott's groundbreaking Blade Runner. His chilling delivery of Wake Up, Time to Die became an instant classic. Sadly, James died in 1999 after suffering a heart attack at his home in Malibu, California. Shelley Berman as Desperate Car Owner the sit-down comedy of Shelley Berman, so named for his frequent position on stage, perched on a stool as he reeled off anxious neurotic monologues that embodied the minor tragedies of everyday life, was a major force in transforming the tone and focus of comedy in the mid-1950s from broad slapstick and joke-driven material to humor drawn from character foibles and all-too-real scenarios. Sadly, Berman died from complications from Alzheimer's disease at his home in Bell Canyon, California, in the early morning of September 1st, 
2017. Larry Storch as Ranko. Storch became a go-to for wacky roles in 60s comedies. He shared the screen with Hollywood heavyweights like Tony Curtis, Gregory Peck, and Rock Hudson.